Hey Eric, that scope you gave me, it works. Had to do a little work at first though. The fan uh, in, in the back was stuck. Need a little WD-40 to get it going. Uh, after that it made a really intense smell for a little while. And then it burned it off. And I think we're good. Uh, knobs of course needed a little bit of uh, futz in. You know, that's use. Gotta use it. Use it or lose it. And uh, I think it seems to be working okay. Um, okay, next scope. I'm happy. I'll use that. Next scope, we have a, my 565. Uh, this is a really wonderful scope. I love it to death. Uh, this side, we have a four channel amplifier, which is the four things going across. And this side, we have another amplifier. This is a differential one amplifier. It takes two signals and looks at the difference between the two. This is pretty good. It goes up to 20, uh, 20 volts per division. Uh, so it's really good for amplifiers. And it is basically two scopes in one. We have time base A, or upper beam, which is set to upper beam, upper beam amplifier, lower beam time base, lower beam amplifier. So it's two scopes in one. So we can speed this up here. And this is this beam. I can tell you it's an actual beam by I can change the intensity here, and it's the actual beam. I love the scope to death. It's not very high frequency. It's only one megahertz, I think, is the frame. Uh, this amplifier is real slow, uh, 300 kilohertz. And I'm not sure what this is, but it's probably pretty low. Uh, and this one needs a little bit of work, too. It can't go very negative. Uh, something something a little amiss with the, uh, with the vertical drive. Uh, unfortunately, these plugins, the 500 series plugins, have an, a vertical amplifier in them, which seems to me to be kind of expensive way to do a plugin. But you know, hey, whatever. Uh, the letter plugins are a little nicer in that. Let's see. Next scope. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. I forgot the model number. It's a 5000 series scope, but it's the fast frame. Uh, this is a 50 megahertz scope. Uh, I like this scope a lot, but right now it's got a little problem with the intensity. I, I can't turn the intensity low enough, and there's something wrong with the Z-blanking kind of thing. I, I don't know what's going on. I got a book. I'll fix it. <clears throat> Next, we have the venerable 465B workhorse of the 80s, found in pretty much every shop. Uh, can't say I love this scope. Can't say I hate it. I just might sell it. Let's see, this scope up here, this is an SC504 uh, 5000 series mainframe plug-in and it's with a bunch of buddies and we have a voltmeter over here and we have an oscillator here and here is the level and you can see, you know, yeah, they're tied together because this is a test set. Um, let's see. Five oscilloscopes. That's nice. Oh, and when you have a whole bunch of oscilloscopes, sometimes you need to calibrate them. Oh, well, looky here. Look what I have. A CG5001 programmable calibration generator. Yay! And one of these days I gotta get in there and actually calibrate it because calibrators need calibration. And I know this one needs a lot of work. A few more SC504s and a bunch of other 5000 series mainframe stuff. All computer controllable, believe it or not. And came from the 1980s and it's pretty unbelievable. This price for this calibration generator? $15,000. Unbelievable. Now you can get them pretty cheap. Well, yeah, comparatively. Alright, that's it. Scopes.